Hi everybody, it's Tyler again. It's about a year after I've done my bike packing trip. I see that video is pretty popular. And I'm back here with my mountain bike, just picked up picked it up from the shop. And I wanted to give a little a uh, little uh, review on my, my experiences with the wheels. So a couple of years ago, probably about three years ago, I put these 26 inch surly rabbit hole rims on the bike. They're 50 millimeters wide and they're designed to be tubeless. And you know what? I didn't have a fat bike at the time, so that was my way of getting a little wider stance. And let me tell you, this is a very, very wide stance. These are 2.25 inch tires, and they are pretty wide. What I found is, they're really good straight off road. If you want to go through mud, they'll do pretty well for a mountain bike. But when you start cornering, it's a different story. You can see the profile of the tire here is pretty flat. So when you go over and start turning into corners a little harder, you end up riding on this corner. And that's not a lot of cornering area. Um, you can see the edges, edges of these uh, nubs are pretty worn off. I'm not sure if that's focusing. But uh, it gets kind of kind of unnerving when you start going been uh, leaning over in the corners a little bit more. And that's about as, as wide a tire as you can get with these 50 mil Surly rabbit hole rims on this side. It's a 2013 Trek 4300 disc. Um, so the rims, I don't know, I've had a couple rim strips blow out on this one trying to set it up tubeless as well so maybe that's not a very good solution. Um, looking to go a little narrower on rims next time and I maybe Maybe building rims is building wheels sooner than I thought. So the only thing that's stock with the wheel set is this front hub. That's the stock uh, hub from Trek. The rest of it's um, custom, I guess you'd say. Back here I have a Shimano Allfine 8 speed internal gear hub. That's 8 speeds right in there. And I have the trigger shifter up here, which is pretty cool. Um, I went with that because I had a lot of issues with the derailleur getting hung up in mud in Michigan. He was always getting rusty and it ended up so it was too rusty to even um, even adjust. So I got the Allfine. It's pretty pretty reasonable price I think. Uh, I think about $300 maybe. Uh, put the little cable t uh, chain tensioner on there. Uh, to deal with the vertical dropouts, which should be fucking illegal. <laughs> uh, comment in the sections about vertical dropouts. But, uh, yeah, overall, I kind of I liked riding the hub. Um, the hub, it has a little bit wider gear spacing than the derailleur would. Um, so you end up feeling like you're shifting a, a, gear, and a, four, a gear and a quarter or a gear and a half when it's really just one gear difference. Uh, it's kind of kind of weird sometimes when you shift and it's not the same gear step but you know I, I, I'll take it for the the cleanliness uh, keeping it running at all times if your chain gets uh, completely trashed you don't lose shifting it's got eight speeds um, you have a trigger shifter here and you can shift while you're while you're um, sitting still no big deal um, I found a couple issues with the shifter. One is that this indicator uh, does not always shift with it, so you kind of whack it and then it goes back. Um, it's pretty annoying, but it's not an issue with riding it, especially out on the trails. Um, one issue is when you shift down, you can only shift down one at a time. The original derailleur, I think, would shift either two or three. Um, I don't remember what derailleur it was. Go look it up on their specs on the Trek website. but. That's one thing that's annoying. Um, if you're going up a hill, yeah, you can track stand or you can hold your uh, pedals straight and shift as much as you want. But if you can't keep momentum dropping two at once, um, it can be a little bit of an issue. Ah, excuse me. Second issue, um, I've had the hub replaced twice. Uh, this is the main issue I've had with this thing. Um, Got the lowest gearing I can just to make it, because um, I like low gearing to climb up hills. I don't want to stand up as much. Um, so I've got a 32 to, is it 
maybe 23, I'm not sure. Um, biggest cog I can get, and I've had a couple issues with it not shifting right. When I first got the bike, when I first got the hub, I should say, um, I was, why is this? Okay, I'll figure that out later. A little bit loose there. Um, when I first got the hub, it wasn't, it felt like it was missing shifts. It was pretty annoying. Um, so it, it would, I would shift twice and it would feel like it was shifting once. And I took it in, ended up getting new internals from the hub under warranty from Shimano. The uh, shop here in Flagstaff, Arizona installed it. I've had really good experiences with them. Um, but I rode it for another year, ended up getting a, you know, it's, it's not bad. You know, it, you get a little indicator here, you put it in fourth, so I'm going to go two, three, four, and then you can look down here with some little, I don't know if you can see that, is it focusing? Two little uh, yellow indicators where you can kind of ballpark it into gear. Well, I've been trying to adjust it myself and, and keep it running as best as possible. It's kind of hard because, you know, internal gear hubs, it's, you get a, you kind of have to have a touch for it. Um, but yeah, I, I went to I went uh, on a little road trip with put this in a rental car and I took it out, put the back wheel back on, and it uh, it didn't work right. So when I was in first gear, if I tried to shift down to see if I was in first gear, if I wasn't looking at the shifter, in first gear pushing on downshift, it would click like, and of course you know that's things in the hub doing things. Uh, so I took it in the shop when I got back here. Turns out there were metal shavings, so I had to have the internals replaced for the second time in a year. Uh, not too happy about that. So, you know, I like I like the riding experience when it's when it's working right. It's it's pretty good. Um, I'll take it over derailleur just because of the cleanliness issues with a derailleur. But I'll tell you what, uh, Shimano needs to make a more durable hub, I think. Or, you know, maybe maybe I'm just uh, riding too hard, but. I told myself when I got the derailleur, I'm going to ride it like I want to ride it, and if it breaks, then I go back to derailleur because it's not worth having a mountain bike that I ride for fun and having to watch my shifting so much. So I'll tell you what, if the shifter breaks, or if the derailleur uh, sorry, if the hub uh, breaks again, if I have another issue, I'm probably going to be building a new wheel set with the derailleur again just because this is ridiculous. So, I wish Roloff would make a 7-speed. I wish Shimano would make a durable 8-speed. I've read that the 8-speed's more durable than the 11, so I'm not sure what they're going through, but uh, that's about what I'm dealing with. So, I hope you found this informative. i um, not sure sh if Surly is making these rims anymore, but I would uh, recommend, if you're going to use the 50 mil. Um, Surly rabbit hole rims, uh, use at least a 2.5 tire, if not a 3. Um, otherwise, go with a narrower rim. And then, uh, ride an all fine gently, I guess. I'm not really sure what else to say about that, but it's been kind of, kind of a trial for me. It's nice to have a mountain bike that works, and that's not always what's happening with the all fine 8. So, I uh, appreciate you for watching. Um, Leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns or your experiences. Let me know your experiences because I know I've had some issues with it. I'm not sure everyone else had. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for watching and have fun on the trails.